Hello, everyone. I'm Du Wang. Today, I'm going to present our work, TechScan, Simultaneous Target Image and uh, Material Identification with Commodity RFID Devices. I'm sure you would be like it, so let's start. Nowadays, we have seen many exciting passive sensing applications. By seeing passive and here, we mean that there is no need to have any device to being attached to or hold by a target. Those applications include gesture recognition, virtual reality, Wi-Fi-based elderly monitoring and intruder detection. Among all technologies, the radio frequency RF-based passive sensing is popular due to the widely deployed Wi-Fi and RFI devices. Many research work have been published in this area, including the localization, motion tracking, gesture recognition, smart home, and so on. Although a, a great success, an important missing component is using the cheap commodity RF devices to perform a target image and material identification. Perhaps you have read a lot of papers that the localization, gesture recognition in the Mobicom, Sitcom, and other conference, but you may not read any paper about the uh, target uh, image and uh, material identification. So uh, many applications would benefit from knowing the title shape and the material type. For example, with the material type, for example, with the material identification, this robot can automatically adjust its grip strength when, it, when, when, when the robot is picking the X and the stone. Also, detecting the concealed weapons at the security checking point would be possible by knowing the title shape and the material type. So we present a tag scan, a system that can identify a title's material and the image as shape simultaneously. Our system has three key advantages. First is no cost. Tank Sky works on cheap commodity RFID devices. Second is high accuracy. Tank Scan can even differentiate between Coke and Pepsi, and even can image the human body shape accurately. Lastly, Tank Scan is easy to be adopted. It works with the uh, uh, commonly readily available phrase and RSS readings. So, in the rest of this talk, I will answer these two questions. First, how can we identify a title's material? To do so, we conduct a benchmark experiment. For example, here we pour different liquids such as, vinegar, uh, such as water, vinegar, and beer into the cup and measure the face and RSS changes when the single penetrates through the liquid. And we have two observations. First, different liquids has quite different phase and RSS changes. For example, for the very similar uh, two kinds of milk, milk, the skimmed milk has a phase change of 0 0.4 readings. Well, the whole milk has a phase change of three readings. Second, even for the very similar liquids such as Coke and Pepsi, we can still have a clear phase change difference. However, without knowing the title size, it is very challenging to identify the material type. For example, a half cup of water has quite a different phase and RSS changes compared to a full cup of water. So, to identify, uh, uh, to identify a title's material, we need to find a material feature that is independent of the title size. Before going to the details, I will show you the background and the limitation of parcel approaches. Considering a target that blocks the directional path between the RFID tag and an antenna. 
when the single penetrates through the, uh, the target, we can write the phase and the RSS change measurements as follow. Well, D is the single, uh, D is the propagation distance inside the target. Beta air and alpha air are the phase and RSS changes in the air over a, over a unit distance, which are constant. Beta target and alpha target are unique for each material type. So past approaches use them for material identification. However, we are unable to solve these two equations with the three unknowns, namely beta target, alpha target, and the tighter size D. So plus method does not work when the target size D is unknown. To solve this problem, in this paper, we, we can remove the unknown target size D and uh, discover a new material feature, which is given at here. As, as we can say, the title size D, uh, this new feature is independent of the title size D. Second, the, the new feature is unique for each material type, since alpha air and beta air are constants, and alpha target and beta target are unique, unique for each material type. Second, this new feature can be easily calculated from the phase and ISS readings. So now without requiring the title wise title, uh, title size information, we can employ the new material feature for, uh, for material identification. Here, uh, I will show you the new material feature values of different uh, liquid targets. As we can see, for the uh, six kinds of liquid targets, the new material feature value is quite different from each other. So far, I have talked about the material identification. Next, I will introduce how can we image our target's shape. We start with a benchmark experiment. We pour the liquid into the cup and increase the liquid height. We found that there is a linear relationship between the phase change measurement and the, ta ta and the liquid height. This liquid height, in fact, is the target waste information. So that is to say we can use the phase change measurement to estimate the target waste information. Now I will introduce the base idea of our image method. When the reader moves at a location, Based on the phase change measurement, we can estimate the tidal waste information at one angle. When the reader moves over many locations, we can estimate the tidal waste information from many angles. Then, by stitching those estimated tidal waste information, we can obtain the tidal cut image. However, it is not trivial to stage those target, target waste information for an image estimate. The challenge here is that we do not know the starting points of the waste information. So we will obtain wrong image estimates. So how can we solve this problem? Our solution is that we, we use more wins. The key observation is that Images estimated from different arrays align well if the starting points are estimated correctly. Here, I will use two arrays as an example. When the reader moves around the target, we can get two sets of title waste information. To narrow, to narrow down the searching space for the, waste, for the starting points, we employ the boundary detection and the layer of the searching space is shown as the right area at here. Next, at each edge of the right area, we randomly select a point and connect those points to form lines. We assume the starting points are located on those lines. Then we can get two image estimates from the two arrays. Next, we put the two estimated images together 
and we check if the, the two images are aligned. As we can see uh, here, the two estimated images are not aligned. So the starting points are not estimated correctly. Then we change the starting points and try again. Now we get another two image estimates. Again, as we can see uh, here, the two images are not aligned, so the starting points are also not estimated correctly. We keep trying. Finally, we can obtain two image estimates from the two arrays that aligned well. Now the starting points are estimated correctly, and we can estimate the Titus cut image accurately. So, so, uh, so far, I have talked about the target image and the material identification. However, we still face the multipass problems in the reality. Since the multipass problem will break the linear relationship between the phase change measurement and the tidal waste information. As a result, we are, we are unable to estimate the tidal target image accurately. To solve this problem, we introduce a two-stage multi-pass suppression method. In the first stage, we identify the clean channels and the clean tags that are not affected by multi-pass greatly with a simple linear, with a simple linear fit. This works well in the environment with little multi-pass. Well, in the rich multi-pass environment, we lead the second stage enhancing the direct path single law and uh, reduce the multi-pass reflections. To do so, we first uh, calculate the phase shifts of direct path single laws between different uh, tags and uh, between different uh, channels. Then, by compensating those two kinds of phase shifts, we are able to align the direct path single laws of all tags and all channels. Next, by adding the aligned single law, we can increase the power of direct path single law and reduce the power of multi-pass reflections. Thus, the multi-pass effect is reduced. Now, let me show you how our system works in, the, in reality. TaxGuy is implemented on cheap commodity RFID devices. We test our system in three environments with different, uh, with different uh, amount of multi-passes. I will use this video to show the material identification performance of, of our tax scan. As you can see, tax scan can estimate the liquid uh, material, uh, such as water, vinegar, and milk uh, very accurately in real time. For 10 kinds of commonly say liquid materials, tax scan achieves an accuracy of higher than 94%. We also test our system in a more challenging scenario that differentiating very similar liquids such as Coke and Pepsi, skim milk and whole milk. As we can see, tax scan still achieves a high accuracy. To image a Titus shape, we need two tag rings and a robot to move around the target. By stitching the estimated Tata waste information, we can obtain the cut image of the target. The image result is shown here. This triangle shape is full of water, and this rectangle shape target is made of concrete. As we can see, text scan can estimate the cut image of the triangle shape and the rectangle shape accurately. Well, the image accuracy is decreased for the complicated shapes, such as the hexagonal shape and the circular shape. So how can we improve the uh, image accuracy for those, uh, those complicated target? Our solution is using more rings. For example, here, 
with just two more events added, the image accuracy is greatly improved compared to the two array image result. Test scan is also to uh, is also able to image a human body so accurately when the human body is behind the wall made of plywood. In a more challenging scenario, TaxGuy is able to image two targets accurately at the same time when the two targets are not close to each other. While well, when the two targets are very close to each other, we may consider them as a big target. For more details, please refer to our paper. Now let me conclude this talk. First, TaxGuy performs the, the material identification and the target image at the same time. Second, for material identification, we, we introduce a new approach that is independent of the title size. Lastly, we introduce a lower cut image method. And uh, thanks, and uh, I'm very happy to take any questions.